Hi, uh, so my name is Sangjun Jonathan Kim, and the title of my presentation is The Proof of Concept of a Pneumatic AFO Powered by a Custom Compressor for Drop Loop Correction. So uh, the motivation of our study is, as many of you all know, global aging is a critical issue, and 20% of the age population have gait-related impairment. So to provide assistance for this population, a great number of active ankle foot orthoses have been developed and promising clinical results have been reported. However, as you can see from the images, uh, the sy these systems are bulky and have considerable masses, which limits the practical usage during daily life. And also, according to previous um, results, uh, adding small masses to the distal location of the uh, body can result in large metabolic losses and imbalance in the kinematic chain. So to address some of these issues, uh, more current systems are developed using cable-driven remote actuation. So there is the innovative Harvard Exosuit where they provide most of the heavy components on the trunk of the body and then minimize the additional mass attached to the ankle. So the heavy actuators and pulley cartridge and batteries are placed on the trunk. Um, however, they also report that uh, for these cable-driven remote actuation systems, uh, the tensioning mechanism and algorithms can be complex. Another approach is using pneumatic remote actuation. So pneumatic systems um, have the advantage of not being affected by the tubing configuration. Um, also, back drivability can be uh, realized via simple valve control, and uh, pneumatic systems provide user to robot compliance. In other words, uh, humans can interact with robots safely and comfortably. However, a critical issue of pneumatic systems are that they are um, tethered to large uh, compressors uh, that are required to provide um, the pressurized air for assistance. So, based on our previous study, we have developed a portable pneumatic energy source uh, based on a piston crank compression mechanism. So the basic working principle is when the piston head um, goes down, then vacuum within the cylinder leads ambient air to flow within the cylinder. And when the piston head goes back up, the um, air is compressed and sent to the system. So our finalized compressor is approximately 1.5 kilograms and the dimension is as follows. Uh, we use a double piston crank mechanism uh, to double the compression rate. So the finalized system has a maximum pressure uh, comparable to large uh, compressors, however, is much more portable. So we use this developed system to develop an AFO system, and this is the overview. So we use uh, moldy vests and pouches to distribute the components over the trunk. Um, so the compressor and battery pack, which is 1.9 kilogram, is attached to the back of the trunk and the controller in front. And then we use air tubing and electrical wiring to connect the trunk unit to the foot unit. So the foot unit um, was 0.6 kilograms, including the AFO and GRF sensors, which are used to detect uh, different gate cycles. So we apply the system um, for drop foot patients. So drop foot is a gait abnormality in which the dropping of the forefoot due to muscle weakness or spasticity. So if you look at the characteristics of uh, drop foot gait, first the uh, left graph is the uh, kinematics in the uh, sagittal plane. So the black um, line represents the uh, average data of uh, 99 healthy subjects and the red and uh, blue line uh, represents the data of a hemiparetic droplet patient. Um, so the red line is the unaffected leg and the blue is the impaired leg. So as you can see, um, there are large kinematic deviations during the uh, 0 and 10%, the uh, initial loading phase, and also the 60 to 100 uh, swing phase of the gate cycle. And also, according to our previous publication, approximately 7.6 Newton meter years of external torque is required to provide uh, a 50 degrees passive movement to the angle. So um, our AFO has uh, the major components, including an output cylinder, a linear output cylinder, a pressure sensor, which is used to monitor the pressure of the output cylinder, and two solenoid valves, 
and a magnetic encoder to measure the ankle uh, kinematics. Um, so the right table is um, the summary of the masses of each component. Uh, we use a slider crack mechanism to transform the linear motion to rotational. Uh, we implement this mechanism to guarantee user safety from structurally uh, limiting the range of motion and also due to its simplicity and robustness. Um, so the pneumatic circuit is um, as follows. So on the trunk, there is the custom compressor, a pressure sensor to monitor the uh, pressure of the custom compressor, and also a reservoir where air is accumulated. And on the foot, there is the two uh, solar node valves, the pressure sensor and the output. So as I mentioned previously, uh, drop foot patients only require assistance during the swing phase and the initial contact. So the basic control concept is that we um, accumulate air during the stance phase where no assistance is required. And during the swing phase, we uh, control the valves so that the pressurized air is translated to the output cylinder to provide assistance. So to uh, look at each phase uh, in more detail, so during the stance phase where no assistance is required, uh, we provide uh, transparent mode. So uh, during this mode, uh, the supply valve is closed and the uh, pressurized air uh, developed in the custom compressor is accumulated in the reservoir. At the same time, the exhaustion valve is open so that the output cylinder can move freely. So the resistive torque during this phase um, has a peak resistive torque of 0.18 Nm and the average resistive torque is approximately 0.03 Nm. Uh, during the swing phase where we provide assistance, uh, we control the supply valve and the exhaustion valve in an on-off uh, manner uh, to modulate the pressure of the output cylinder. So the response time uh, to reach the desired pressure is about 130 milliseconds, and it takes about uh, 350 milliseconds to naturally dis discharge the output cylinder. So finally, we uh, validate our system on two droplet patients. Uh, the demographics is as follows. Um, we do a nine meter ground walking test, which was equipped with 12 optical motion capture cameras. And we compare uh, four conditions, a barefooted condition, a standard running shoe condition, and wearing the AFO however unpowered, and wearing the AFO while it's powered. So the protocol is we um, set the optical markers and then test the barefooted condition, provide 10 minutes of rest, do the standard shoe condition, 10 minutes of rest, and then the AF off condition, and finally uh, the AF on condition after calibrating. So the experimental video is as follows. So the first is the barefooted condition, and uh, the second is uh, the assistant condition. So as you can see, the swing phase uh, kinematics was improved and also improved during the initial contact. Um, the frontal view, uh, you can focus on the toe. You can see that the toe is lifted during the swing phase and also during the heel strike. So the experimental results is as followed. So um, as you can see in the graph, um, improved kinematics was shown during the swing phase and the initial uh, loading phase. And if you look at the unaffected leg, um, we can see that uh, the kinematics was consistent uh, despite different conditions. So although uh, assistance is provided for one leg, the other leg is not affected. And then if we look at the peak dorsiflexion ankle uh, during the swing phase, we uh, were able to see that there was an improvement of 13.6 degrees in average for the two uh, drop of patients. In summary, we have introduced a fully portable pneumatic AFO, uh, which is powered by a custom compressor. And we implemented a simple on-off controller uh, to provide assistance and vector mobility. Uh, the system was validated on two hemiparetic droplet patients showing improvements in peak dorsiflexion angle during the swing phase and the initial loading phase. Uh, for our future work, uh, we are planning to improve the response rate of the system by applying valve uh, uh, solar node valves with higher flow rates and also um, to optimize the hardware to minimize the uh, mass of the ankle unit. Also, we are, we are planning to apply adaptive controllers to optimize the assistive torque profile. Uh, thank you for listening.